So now that we have a strong framework as to what the genetic code is and the idea behind star codons, stop codons, needing a correct reading frame, and the overall language of an mRNA, we can apply that knowledge by now speaking about true gene expression, a real function of gene expression, a part of it known as transcription. And we'll entitle this first flowchart Transcription 1. There'll be two parts to it. This first part will be devoted to the initiation, which is probably the most important and the most difficult part of transcription to understand. So, Transcription 1. This is all about the idea. Transcription itself is all about the idea of the following. It is responsible, it's a process in the cell that is responsible for the synthesis of RNA, okay, of RNA that is complementary, okay, complementary, and I would even say anti-parallel as well, complementary to DNA. So if we go back to our central dogma of biology, we had to go from DNA to RNA. Remember how we had to do the following, DNA to RNA, and then eventually to protein, right? So what we're going to examine in this part of the lecture series is this part right here, DNA to RNA, and this is done through TXN, transcription. Let's see how this happens by looking at the first part of transcription known as initiation. So there are three steps to transcription. Um, I would put like maybe a three in parentheses right here so that you know that there are three steps. We'll do the first step in this first transcription flowchart and do the other two in the second transcription flowchart. This first step is called initiation. Very easy name to remember to start the process. Initiation will involve looking at the DNA. Because remember, DNA is our starting point. So we have to take DNA, and let's look at the gene expression definition one more time, take DNA in order to direct the synthesis of RNA and thus the synthesis of protein. So let's take DNA and start directing some synthesis right over here. So the initiation, first thing that we have to understand is that um, DNA can be considered the template for RNA synthesis. And that's a key word here. It's a template for RNA synthesis. And specifically, keep in the back of your mind that we have to make RNA. And in order to make RNA, we need a template to make it. It doesn't just happen. And that template will be DNA specifically. So why is DNA the template? Why is this such a perfect molecule to use in order to make RNA? Well, it lies in the fact that DNA, and this is why we have to understand its structure so intimately and so um, in-depth, DNA has a double-stranded structure. So we'll write double-stranded. And this might not tell you anything on the surface in terms of initiation and transcription, but if you look really into this idea of double-stranded DNA, you will find out that one strand of this double-stranded DNA will serve a very important purpose of being transcribed. One strand is certainly TXNED, meaning transcribed, and the other strand is not transcribed. Other is not T-X-N-E-D for transcribed. So because we have one strand that's transcribed and one that is not, which one of these do you think is going to serve as the template strand? Of course, this one right here is now our definition of a template strand. The strand that will eventually be transcribed, one of them will not, and we're going to see that through an example at the end of this initiation video. So this is our template strand and a key idea behind the template strand is that it is read in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. That's going to make more sense as we continue our discussion on initiation. So we've established that DNA is our template strand and we have to read it in this direction. Remember, DNA is anti-parallel. Remember that there's a complementary component we have to figure out. All of these things will play a major role when we get into our overall example. In addition, in initiation, we have to understand the really important process that a promoter uh, sort of promotes. Um, the promoter is considered a specific DNA sequence, so we're going to write this down as a specific DNA sequence, SEQ for sequence, on the, uh, let's say, template strand, the template 
slash, let's say, T-X-N-E-D, transcribed strand, because they're one and the same thing based on our definition established here. One strand is transcribed, thus one strand is the template. That strand will have something known as a promoter region on it. This specific promoter region is going to have a specific arrangement of DNA, A, T, C, and G, that's going to do the following. It actually marks the start of gene at the three prime end. So let's remember the overall goal is to take DNA and turn it into a protein. To take a gene, to transcribe it, to translate it, to express it as a functional thing. So in order to start that whole process, you need a promoter. And that promoter tells you on the DNA sequence, hey, this is the part of the gene at the three prime end that you need to start, that you need to begin initiation. Let's promote this DNA sequence specifically at the start of this specific gene. So we have this specific arrangement of A, T, C, and G that is there that allows for us to initiate transcription. More specifically, we can state very simply that this is the starting site, just like I said, for TXN transcription. And in addition, this is a key sort of point that students sometimes get confused about. It is not transcribed, actually. It's actually just a region that says, hey, come over here. It's going to tell RNA polymerase, which is an enzyme that we're about to get into, to just attach on here and start transcribing everything after this sequence. Okay, The sequence is basically a big shining light that tells RNA polymerase, hey, this is the gene that I want you to transcribe. You don't need to trans transcribe this promoter region, just transcribe the gene. Here's the gene to my right. And we'll see that when we describe RNA polymerase over here. So RNA polymerase, which from this point forward will just be described or written as RNA POL, RNA pole. RNA polymerase um, is something that we've seen before actually in DNA synthesis. And let's remember that this is actually an enzyme that does not need a primer. So no primer needed. It doesn't need, um, let's say, uh, a couple of extra nucleotides to get started. It actually can do its job without a primer. Who does need a primer? DNA polymerase needs an RNA primer that we established in DNA synthesis. Um, so in this situation, we actually don't need a primer. All we need is a promoter, and a promoter is just a region of DNA that says, hey, RNA polymerase, come over here and transcribe what's next to this region. So we have no primer needed. In addition, its function is very simple. It binds to the promoter, so it's that basically that shining light that tells it, hey, come over here, so it binds to that region. At that region, it's going to unwind the helix, so it does a lot, actually. Unwinds helix, that's a pretty big step, big enzyme, thus. It unwinds the helix, and why is it unwinding? Because there's only one strand necessary, so you don't want to get mixed up with the other strand. You only want to focus on one strand, so you unwind the helix so that you can focus your efforts on that one template strand. It unwinds the helix, and then it begins transcription after that unwinding, okay? So it basically does a very important, uh, many multifaceted job of binding, unwinding, and beginning transcription. In addition, uh, a key idea behind RNA polymerase is that it synthesizes or it works in what is known as the five prime to three prime direction. So now, here we said that the DNA strand is read in the three prime to five prime direction, and RNA polymerase works or synthesizes in the five prime to three prime direction. Synthesizes, I'm going to say, RNA, what is known as transcript, that is the RNA mRNA basically that's going to be made, synthesizes RNA transcript five prime to three prime direction. This simply means that this RNA polymerase has to work in a way that it promotes and creates a complementary and also anti-parallel transcript strand. Anti, excuse me, anti-parallel um, strand. So complementary and anti-parallel RNA sequence, let's say. So this gets a little confusing. I think the best way to understand this is through a very simple example. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking DNA, 
We're going to find a template on that DNA strand that I'm going to give you. We're going to transcribe it using RNA polymerase and end up with an RNA sequence known as a transcript, okay? A copy, an exact copy of what is necessary. So, transcription is all about copying things, okay? So we're going to copy things, but we're just going to copy it in a bit of a different RNA language. What I mean by this is that, let's imagine we have a DNA sequence that's the following. A DNA sequence will have a five prime end with the following arrangement, A, T, G, A, C, T, and it will end with a three prime. DNA strands are double stranded, so let's make a complementary strand that's going to be the following. T, A with T, T with A, C, A goes with T, G, A, close it with a five prime end. Okay, so now a couple of questions for you. Is this, this is a DNA strand, of course. Why aren't we using U's? I thought we were making RNA sequences and RNA transcripts. Well, we're not using U's right now because we're only focusing on a double-stranded DNA. Now our job is to figure out which strand will be transcribed and which will not be transcribed. Well, if you look at this right here, that it's red in the three prime to five prime direction, we have to find the strand that is red that we read in the three prime to five prime direction. Does this read in the three prime to five prime direction, the top one? No, it's five prime to three prime. So this is actually going to be just not transcribed. So over here we can just write in parentheses, not uh, T, X, N, E, D. This strand up here is actually not going to be important right now. It's not going to be transcribed, thus we're going to sort of just eliminate it so it doesn't confuse us. So now we have a strand. This is going to be known as our template strand right here. Okay, so we have a template strand. This template strand will be read in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction by who or by what? It's of course going to be by something known as RNA polymerase. But RNA polymerase doesn't just hop on here. What actually has to happen is there has to be a bit of a promoter sequence here. So we have to write P-O-R-M for promoter. There's going to be a bit of a promoter sequence here that is going to say, hey, RNA polymerase, come over here. I have a transcript that I need you to, I have a template that I need you to read and transcribe. So then what's going to happen is we're going to have RNA polymerase come in and it's going to start working in the five prime to three prime direction. Synthesizes five prime to three prime. It has to be complementary and anti-parallel. Is, so if you see an open three prime end, the complement is to put a five prime end. Doesn't that make sense if it synthesizes five prime to three prime? What I'm about to draw here is going to be our RNA transcript. And so if this is our RNA transcript, it makes sense that it has to be 5' prime to 3' prime because RNA polymerase works 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little bit of an extended line here. The reason why is because there's a promoter region that's not transcribed, so I'm not going to write any letters. I just want to make this extension to show that there was a promoter that the RNA polymerase saw and hopped on to, binded to, and unwinded, and began transcription. Now I'll begin transcription by doing the complementary of our 3' prime to 5' prime template strand. So what's complementary to T? That's of course A. What's complementary to A? T. But this is an RNA transcript. Do not forget that. So A does not combine with T in RNA. It combines with U. And G combines with uh, a C combines with G, of course, and then T combines with, again, it combines with U, uh, it combines with, excuse me, A, and then C, and then U, we close it with a three prime end. Have we made something five prime to three prime? Yes, we have, five prime to three prime. We have a promoter region that wasn't transcribed, so I didn't put any letters here. We have this final transcript. This is our RNA transcript, and thus, this is our, what we're going to refer to from this point forward as our mRNA that will then continue the next two processes necessary for transcription that will be elongation and uh, termination, which will continue in our next video.